now that you have expanded beyond that initial use case, your most developed product around global, global supply chain networks, uh, what other kinds of use cases are people using this reactive data processing for? So this is uh, this is interesting because like uh, the the use cases uh, expressed in our terms. So I'm I'm assuming we're discussing data here and data like data audiences uh, are extremely horizontal. They're not like tied to industry uh, specific verticals. Uh, so so many of many of us change jobs, you know, between different companies, like going from from healthcare to uh, to let's say whatever transportation or manufacturing. But the the kind of uh, data of use cases uh, that that exist from a, you know from a data science perspective are pretty consistent throughout there's uh, anomaly detection in real time uh, predicting anomalies uh, detecting fraud which is a type of uh, anomaly detection uh, and recommendations uh, online uh, online updated recommender systems uh, some some further ones which do appear in some cases are around forecasting and uh, time series forecasting plus plus uh, Let's say some, some, some that are further down the stream, but um, in in some sense, it's it's also a question of the most immediate value. Uh, for for most immediate, the most immediate pain point is really uh, the, the one where you need to act quickly, and uh, the time horizon uh, related to anomaly detection to alerting is just much much shorter uh, than the time horizon related to uh, updating forecast models typically. Right. So I can imagine financial applications, for example, where you're detecting fraud would be yeah. a really great use case. Yeah. Financial applications are a nice one. Uh, it's also interesting that you have several horizons in the financial application. Let's say you're doing real-time transaction processing, be it more on the major card processing uh actor side or on the DeFi side, either way, you have a window of opportunity of two to three seconds to block certain types of transactions, those where the user is still not getting impatient. And then a post um, processing like window where you can still undo some transactions or uh, try to fix things, but uh, things get worse in the horizon of seconds to minutes. Uh, so so this time, time horizon is actually very um very short in this case. Uh, one that many of, uh, of us in data know is uh, is related to uh, monitoring of uh, of uh, health of systems um, of uh, processes that are going on. So things things around uh, um, observability uh, in in uh, processes server monitoring and in, in, because the uh, the system as a uh, reliability field. This is an interesting use case, which uh, which is very uh, special, but it also gives, I think, uh, an idea of the kind of uh, alerting that we are looking at. If there's a human operator involved, you want to react within uh, your SLA time window, which will typically be something like 15 minutes. This is the, the, the number that comes up most often given, given uh, guidelines of major companies. Uh, so you have like 15 minutes to react and the kind of uh, data that you have is how many minutes of this 15 minute window that you as a human have to react are eaten up uh, by the system being slow to give you the information. If it's more than five minutes, you're really, really angry. But maybe you could go from five minutes to three minutes to 30 seconds. Sometimes you increase the value there and you can actually do way, way better if you if you get this alert faster. Cool. 